All my work begins with the question of the horizon. The horizon is that which marks the limit of our vision, but it is also a moving frontier. The more we move towards it, the more it retreats from us. To look at the horizon in this sense is also always to try and look beyond it, to open up what is available to be seen. The strange thing about living in Singapore is that although we are in an island city-state, in fact the only island city-state in the world, we rarely see the horizon or even contemplate the edges of the city when it is entirely at these edges that the city has become the global city that it is today. Historically, Singapore was a colonial port city and this is reflected in the structure of its economy today, which is completely integrated into the global economy and dependent on flows of goods, labour and capital in and out of the country. Yet, in our lived experience of the city, even when we are at its very edges, sometimes we find that our attention is turned inland, as if we were made to look at ourselves in the very moment when we could look outside into the world. Remarkably, if you were to look at the entire Marina Bay area, which is the civic and business centre of the city, located right by the sea, the way that the entire area has been constructed compels you to turn away from the sea and towards the buildings that surround you. In fact, if you were to go to the very top of the Marina Bay Sands, which is of course built entirely on reclaimed land, you would find that the so-called infinity pool extends not towards the sea, but towards the interior of the city. It is really only when you turn around and look at what's behind the building that you see the oil tankers on the horizon. It's almost as if the building was designed to conceal this very view. Screen Green is a lecture and video installation that I produced between 2015 and 2016 that examines the politics of greening in Singapore through the terms of cinematic post-production. The inspiration came from a televised broadcast of the National Day Rally speech by the Prime Minister several years ago, during which he spoke for an extended period against a green background. Exactly the same shade of green that you would use in cinematic compositing, where you would film your subject against a green background and then later replace the green in post-production with a virtual background. In the subsequent year, the Prime Minister again stood before a green background when he delivered the national address, except that this time this was the green of the Garden City. Looking at the two images, I started to wonder how these two variations of greening might converge. Are green spaces in Singapore somewhat functioning like giant green screen studios? So I started collecting all kinds of political imagery in which the background is constituted by green, whether it is the green of botany or the green of the cinematic green screen. And at some point, a narrative started to emerge around how politics in Singapore has become almost a kind of post-production process. It was becoming less about the domestication of the people or how the state would directly produce subjectivity and more about how the state creates so-called green spaces for the people to enter and participate in the image by adding their own backgrounds and expressing themselves, but only within the constraints set by the state. Of all my works, Green Green is probably the work in which the engagement with Singapore is the most explicit. In fact, you can read in the work the historical trajectory of Singapore from the colonial era to the present day, just by following the sequence of green imagery. But even in my other work where Singapore is less visible, it is always the site of departure from which I engage with discourses of a more transnational character. Partly because this is where I work and have lived for most of my life, but also because I find it an especially productive site to engage in the issues I'm most invested in, such as globalism, the relationship between capitalism and the state, as well as the structural conditions of labour. And very often it is only by going to the very edge of the city 
to the horizon, so to speak, that we can really get a sense of what is at stake in working with these issues. As an artist, a lot of my process begins with looking. And the cinema is perhaps that one space where we partake in looking in the most committed and sometimes even possessed manner. Insofar as in our experience of the city, we are forced to take on an almost distracted mode of looking at the world. Cinema offers a resistance to that requirement. For this reason, apart from drawing on my own experiences navigating the city, I turn to cinema to seek out different ways of looking at a particular subject. For me, cinema is where I learn how to look. And a big part of my work is about taking this mode of attention that we experience in the cinema to the world outside, so that we experience the world almost as a kind of expanded cinema. What are we looking at? Why are we looking at what are we looking at? Is this really all there is to look at?